Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Yep, it's that time again. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And my website's jasonnewland.com. So, uh, I'm sitting here at my desk. Little Vinny is asleep at my feet. Or oh, he's literally just, he's got up off, out of his bed and followed me and lay down at my feet. So he seems to be going, yeah, he's got his eyes closed. So he wants to be near me, which is a good sign. It's weird. He... Okay, I, I should recap. For those that don't know or haven't listened for a little while, I've got a, a little dog called Vinny. He's a... Jack Russell miniature and he's an actual he's an actual breed apparently his father was uh, an award winning dog and so he was born I've seen pictures of his dad and his mum so he's got exactly the same face as his dad like a red face. The thing is, the rest of his body's red as well. His dad didn't have that. So he's completely red apart from his feet and his tummy or his chest area, which is white, like his mum. So he's, yeah. He's got his mum's chest and feet, I guess, because she was like white quite kind of, yeah, quite a lot of white on her, but his face is almost identical to his dad, (laughs) honestly, it's ridiculous, and I saw him as a baby, I saw pictures of him as a baby before he'd even got his eyes open, and he was just little, this little crumple, just a little blob, (laughs) So I've had him for, I think in two days time, it'll be a whole month. It goes so quickly, doesn't it? So it'll be a month and the, he basically, he was bred, lived with the breeder for the first three months, I suppose, however long it is before they can be released, be released. Uh, He had his bits cut off, he had, you know, he had injections, all the kinds of stuff that breeders do, and then he had his first home, it was his, officially, I guess, his second home, but his first forever home, as people like to say, and she became ill, or she wasn't well enough to look after him, so... When he came back to the breeder, <clears throat> excuse me, and so what the breeder did is he had her for a little while, and then his mother in law, his mother in law, not not Vinny's, but the breeder, uh, looked after him for about three months while they found someone else. Uh, I think she was going to keep him, but he was a bit too much for her, uh, in a sense of she wasn't at home enough, because she was working, and she couldn't really be there for him, so she had to find someone else to look after him, to have him, and then, then I ended up with him, so really, I'm his fourth home. And he does, uh, even now, he still, he doesn't know where he is. He he knows where he is, but he doesn't know, I don't think he's secure yet, emotionally. Emotionally? He's, 
you've got anxiety and you know all I can do is give him lots of love I take him out for lots and lots of walks and he sleeps on my bed at night now generally he's just he's very nervous uh, yesterday two two days in a row he's acted a bit strange so he loves the dog downstairs and they play together he came up yesterday and I realised that Vinny wasn't around he's like disappeared he'd been running around and playing and then suddenly he wasn't there it turned out he was hiding behind the settee I was looking for him and he came out of the settee my friend said yeah he was behind the settee I don't know how he got behind there and he was shaking so I picked him up gave him a cuddle like what was going on and then today a similar thing happened this afternoon or late morning same thing he was happy playing around again disappeared like where's he gone I look, uh, I'm thinking maybe he's behind the settee again. Maybe. Well, he wasn't actually. I went into the bedroom, he wasn't in the bedroom. And I go to the front door, and he's at the front door shaking, like cowering. So I, like, oh, what's. So I pick him up, give him a big cuddle, and, you know, reassure him, and if it's okay, you know. And my friend said maybe he's done a wee somewhere, and. He's been punished in the past and he was scared and like, I don't care if he does a wee. If he needs to go to the toilet, just let me know and I'll take him out. And he does. If he has an accident, really don't care. You know, it's, it's, we all have accidents. I've, I've had accidents. I'm having one now. I can't even bother to walk to the toilet. I'm just weeing myself. It's brilliant. No, but it's like, As long as he doesn't do it on the bed, really. I don't really want him to do it on the bed. And I don't want him... I don't want to wake up to, like, a big shower of... You know, I mean, that would be a little bit over the top. Um, but he wakes me up in the morning when it's time for him to go for a walk. When, it's, when he needs a toilet. So, that's what I do every day, every morning, regardless of what time it is. If he's... If I wake up to him crawling all over me, licking my face, I know he needs to go out. Either that or he's hungry. And he's just checking to see if I'm still alive. So he maybe start eating me. I hope not. So I take my stomach tablet. I do a wee-wee of my own. And then I take him out. That's it. That's the routine. So I take him for a walk, a nice walk, and he goes to the toilet if he needs to he always does and that's it but I don't know why he was shaking that was a little bit you know no one was telling him off or anything he just I don't understand I don't know if he thinks he's going to be taken away if someone comes in here is someone going to take him away from me uh, maybe that's what he's used to, you know, he's, when someone comes into his home, he gets taken out of the home and goes somewhere else. Maybe he's, he's got that, he's worried that he's going to be taken somewhere new. I don't know. I'm sure it's not like a logical thing in his head, but he definitely was upset. So I picked him up and gave him a big cuddle and just hugged him for, you know, 10 minutes. And he was okay after that. Even when I left him outside, I went to the petrol station. And this was, yes, no, this was earlier today. So I got some milk and some bits because I had to go back again. Uh, a couple of hours ago because I forgot something. And... So I tied him up outside, just with the lead. I didn't tie him up, but he was, you know, just had a little bit of a loose lead. 
and I wasn't in there for more than two minutes. He was howling, well, like really, like making quite a lot of noise. He could see me through the window, and I was banging on the window, like, "Hey, it's okay." I come outside. He's shaking, and he's jumping up at me, like he wanted to, what he like he needed to cuddle. So he doesn't do that very often, because quite often, if I go to pick him up, he runs away. It like makes it into a game, but he actually seemed to want a, a hug. So I picked him up, gave him a big hug. He stopped shaking. I was like, "It's okay. I'm here. I've not like I was leaving him. So if he's got a bit of um, what do they call it, anxiety thing for being left alone, or uh, yeah, that stuff. I know the term I'm thinking of, but I can't remember the term." Uh, you know the you know the thing, so he might have that because he's lived with. I mean, you know, just to start with, there must be a degree of anxiety for puppies when they leave their original home. You know, they're born, they're with their, well, they're usually with the mother, maybe not with the father, but they're with the mother, and then they're with their brothers and sisters, and then the first humans they have is the the breeder. Maybe the breeder's family, and then you know once they're old enough, and they're then moved on to a completely new home. So that that must be very disruptive emotionally for a puppy. But then to get attached to attachment anxiety, is it? then he gets attached to a new person. For a few months and then gets taken away from her and he gets attached to another female and gets taken away from her and he's with her for three months so I'm kind of is he eating some plastic lovely so I guess I'm thinking maybe he thinks that he's drawn the short straw with me because I'm a, like this boring old man compared to before before he came here he was with a, a woman and who had a kid so there was a lot more energy you know there was a lot more playing um, more people around and there was lots of visitors because she's got family and stuff coming and visiting. So he was he had much more activity, much more stimulation. I mean, you can imagine what it's like with me. This, this is as stimulating as it gets. Although sometimes when I, I talk to him, he falls asleep. You know, I'll actually just look at him and I'll talk to him softly and he falls asleep. So I bore him to sleep sometimes. The other day I was, uh, he was, I don't know if he was begging for a treat or something. And I was, I was busy doing something on the laptop. So I just started talking to him. I said, it's okay, you can calm down. You can relax now. Just calm down. Just let go of that stress. It's all fine. And I was doing that and he got into his bed and he just went to sleep so I just bored him my superpower being boring weird superpower I know but you know he's I'm kind of a bit concerned about him however I don't know if I could do any more than what I'm doing you know I'm with him way too much really I mean I'm not doing myself any favours by spending all my time with him because it's going to get harder to leave him on his own for any length of time without him howling the place down and the plan was to sort of leave him for at least two hours a day I'll go off and do other things but I've kind of had him during the Christmas period 
when there wasn't anything else to do or anywhere else to go. No buses, no trains. Trains have been on strike quite a bit. And then everything closed over Christmas. And, you know, it's... It kind of... Yeah. It hasn't gone to plan. Well, I do still leave him up here. I go out. I still do stuff. But not much. I mean, he's with me pretty much the whole time. Although he doesn't always follow me. He, he follows... What's he doing now? He does follow me around quite a bit. But sometimes... He's happy just to be sort of asleep on the bed or asleep in his in his bed. So sleep on my bed, or shall I say our bed now, it's both of our beds, or sleep in his bed. I can't fit in his bed. I've tried. <laughs> I can't do it. Even when I curl up, I can't. I don't know what he's doing. He's doing something. I don't really know what he's up to. He's always... He's on high alert the whole time. When we go for a walk, he's just always... My friend calls him Radar because his, his ear sticks up. And he's like always, always alert and aware of every sound and every movement. If someone comes out their front door, he tries to get inside their house. He wants to greet everybody. He wants to say hello to everybody. He wants to say hello to every single dog. And he wants to chase every cat. I don't know what the cat thing is. I mean, really, it's a cliche, isn't it? Dogs chase cats. But he's not been taught to chase cats he's just got it in him but he comes from a breed that's been bred to chase foxes and uh, that was that was what he was original not him but his original breed was from the uh it was actually a bloke I think it was a bloke called Jack Russell it was actually it's a he was a priest or something in England and he, he bred two dogs, two different dogs together to make this specific breed that would, you know, help with the foxes. So, yeah, it's uh, he won't be doing that. It's ironic because he looks like a fox. Which I think is quite unusual for a... For, I mean, I, I think he looks like Basil Brush. I really do. But he's... He's, he's kind of happy. Ugh. It's kind of happy because I bought him a little bone today. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big bone for him, but it's because he's only little. And it's it's not a proper bone. It's one of those ones that you can chew on and... I don't really know what it's made of, if I'm honest. Now he's grabbing something. I hope it's not attached to the electric. No, it can't be. It's, it's on the floor, though. That's not good. Wires on the floor. You don't really, shouldn't really be doing that. I don't know what that is. This stuff. Blimey. What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh dear. Let me try and bend down. Wow. I wonder if this will work. So I've got these headphones and I've got a connector. And the whole idea was 
because these headphones now this connector might come with the headphones because the headphones are really good the ones I'm, well, I'm wearing them now so when I do a recording they're very comfortable and they're good quality so I can hear what I'm saying as I, sp as I say it as opposed to 10 minutes later now when I use my laptop which is over there on the other table and I'm doing editing I want to be able to use my headphones there's a couple of reasons for that first of all it's, it's a better sound I can hear better what I'm doing secondly if he barks during a recording and I play it back on loudspeakers he starts barking again so it's quite hard to edit with him barking in the background, if you know what I mean, like twice. I've just found on the floor an adapter, which looks, to be fair, it must be for microphone. There's nothing else it could be for. Maybe that came with this microphone, I didn't even know. Because I bought a couple of adapters a couple of weeks ago. Not just cheap old things, but they're just... But you're supposed to put in one and, you know, then it makes it smaller. But what happened is they gave me the wrong ones. Well, I ordered the wrong ones. So it's actually a small headphone. Did I say microphone? Headphones. A small headphone connection to make the connector bigger. Because on this recording studio, well, on, on the headphones, it's, it's a big connector. And that's what I need for this studio. But I need to make it smaller to go into the laptop. Wow. Now that was that was both boring and complicated. Hmm. So oops, the microphone just uh, the microphone just moved on its own. I'm a bit tired. I am actually a little bit tired. It's a bit, to be fair, it's late. It is 22.09. Here's something mildly interesting. So I've been talking for 23 minutes. And in that time, my iPad has charged 25%. Now 26%. That's pretty good, isn't it? Considering it lasts for quite some time once it's fully charged. Oh, come on. That's interesting, isn't it? Come on. Come on, man. That's interesting. I don't know what he's doing. Then. He's just sitting. Be He's sitting on my foot. But he's looking, he's looking around. But I don't know what he's looking at. But he's focused, very focused on something. I think it's a good sign that he likes to touch me. So, you know, when he's sitting down, he likes to, or when he's laying down on the bed, he likes to be pressed against, even if it's my foot or my leg, sometimes my back. He likes to be sort of touching me which I think is a, a positive sign that he's feeling I don't know connected to me attached to me uh, I don't know what the right words are but he's a good boy but he's looking at me now so once unfortunately if I get his attention he might start whining wanting something wanting to go out or wanting to treat or something like that I like it when he's quiet it doesn't happen that often it's normally only when he's asleep that he's quiet although he does snore he does he snores he's noticing something there's something that he's noticing I don't know what it is. Hope he hasn't seen a mouse or anything like that. 
Mind you, he's the perfect dog for that. I need to tidy this place up. There's some stuff I need to do, get this tidy. I'm thinking, and I realise you can't see the room, so it's not going to make that much sense, but I've got two gaming desks. I don't, I'm not a gamer, but I thought they'd be quite good as office desks. And they're both parallel to each other, so, you know, if there was another person at the other desk, I'd be facing them. We know what parallel means. I'm just, I'm just trying to explain it. I wasn't sure if I got the right, the right term. So what I'm thinking of doing is, and I've also got another table in the middle, like um, to the side of them, and that's where I've been using my laptop. I'm thinking of moving that over to the other side, which would be facing away from the television. Which isn't a huge issue because I don't really watch television when I'm on the laptop anyway. Because I'm busy editing and I can't can't do two things at once. I, I might listen to some music or something like that on the TV, you know, Spotify or something, or a podcast, or maybe. See, so he started again. What's wrong, mate? Um, he, he once he starts, he doesn't stop. I'm not quite sure what he wants. Let me see what he wants. If I can do something. Right, I just press pause there for a second. It looked like he was trying to get at a bone, and the bone was caught up in some wires. So I just pulled the table out, got the bone out, gave it to him, and I was chewing on it. So I think that must have been it. Yeah. Problem sorted. I'm so pleased with myself. Yes. Now he's being noisy. Right, let's have a look. No, I can't tell you about the stats. You don't want to hear about the stats, do you? Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, okay then. It's been quite a good year so far. I know it's very early days. It's only the 5th of January. But in the last 30 days, I've had... 340,000 downloads but in the last f this month this month current month I've had 70,000 downloads in 5 days which is pretty good really I mean it's, you know, it's rare that I get under 10,000 a day now anyway, but still, considering I didn't make any new recordings until yesterday, uh, so Monday, Sunday, the 1st of this January, I had just 14,500, 2nd of January, 12,000, the 3rd of January, 10,000, or just under 10,000, Wednesday, yesterday, just under 17,000. And today so far, 16,500. Still three hours left until the end of the day because it stops at one o'clock in the morning. I say that every time, don't I? It's like, well, just because cause I just said it's 10 o'clock. Well, it finishes, the day finishes in two hours, doesn't it? No, because I don't know why, but the stats go to one o'clock. I'm not sure why. I don't know. Let's see if there's any any messages on Facebook that I can read out. No. Oh, unavailable. New to the group. 
X-Ray. I don't know who X-Ray is. Pending memberships. No, pending questions. Membership questions. I didn't know there was a, a membership question. This is my Jason Newland hypnotist group. Community home. I did post a Happy New Year. I know it's a little bit late, to be fair. I post, uh, yeah, six hours ago. Happy New Year to you all. Sorry it's a bit late. Been a bit unwell for a few days. Anyway, hope you're all groovy and have a fab 2023. Thanks for listening. XXX. So yeah, cool. So five comments. Take care. Jason Newland, hypnotist Jason Newland. That's from Kissy. Glad you're feeling better from Kathy. Thank you, thank you. Sky says, get some rest. There's a picture of a dog. Oh. Deb says, feel better. Glad I have your voice to help me sleep. Thanks. Thank you, Deb. And Diana says, happy new year, Jason. Thank you. So I'm just going to like that one and like that one. So yeah, cool. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, I'm okay. I just... Uh, I don't know why I feel I need to explain, like, why I've not made a recording, but I do a little bit sometimes. Just, um, because, you know, people tell me that they almost sort of rely a little bit on the recordings, and I'm just sometimes feel all like I'm letting people down, you know, if I, if I, Perhaps don't make a recording for a little while. But even though... Oh, I've got another message. Never Another comment on my YouTube. Oh no, it's just a, a new subscriber. Bells... Bell, Bellin Blazin. Welcome if you're listening. YouTube studio. Which means I now have... Dun, dun, dun... Are you ready for this? Ba -da -ba -ba. 819 subscribers. So, it was 818 before that. Probably didn't need to mention that, did I? The fact that I've got one new subscriber. Yeah. So, so look. Oh, so if I wanted to monetize... YouTube I need 1,000 subscribers so I need a, a hundred and um, hundred hundred and ninety one eighty one uh, yeah 181 subscribers and public watch hours I've got 988 out of 4,000 required. So that's not... I think the problem I did is... Because I deleted all my, most of my videos... Apart from one... Uh, a couple of months back. All of those public watch hours... Disappeared. So... You know, I still had... Uh, I lost quite a few subscribers as well. I lost about 50 odd subscribers when I deleted all my videos it kind of makes sense I mean why would you subscribe to a channel that has no videos but there are now I've got 138 videos now on my YouTube channel now quite a few of them are scheduled scheduled to be released all the way up to the 22nd of January but quite a few of them are available so out of 138 at least 100 are available already to watch so that's cool so what was I going to say I'll tell you what I do quite like about well, not quite like 
when it comes, oh, he stopped doing a bow, now he's gone back to his other bone, the new one he's got, which isn't an actual bone, it's, it's shaped like a bone, but it's, I don't know, if you've got a dog, you probably know what I mean, it's, uh, it's almost kind of like a bow, I don't know what the material is that's made of, I'm not sure, One podcast that surprises me, considering I haven't made a new one since I don't know when, is the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. Right, today I've had nearly 3,000 downloads on that podcast, and I haven't made a new recording since the 30th of December. So it's, what, six days? Six days, nearly a week since I made a new recording. And I got nearly 3,000 downloads today. It's like, oh, wow, it's just... I just think it's amazing. It is, to me, it's just like, wow. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. The uh, hypnosis of stress and anxiety. Over 6,000 downloads on that podcast today so far. 3,000 on the hypnosis for sleeping deeply. I wonder where they got the others then, because that's that doesn't add up to the amount. Oh, yeah. Relax and sleep. Yeah, this is weird. Relax and sleep hypnosis daily. I've had nearly a thousand downloads of that one. I've not made a new one there for ages and ages. Ages and ages and ages. Stop smoking, that's been good today. Chronic pain, has that been any good? It's been alright. Ah, it all adds up, doesn't it? Oh, let me boy to sleep. So I had over a thousand yesterday, today, so far, 650. So, it all depends on what time I upload the videos, really. The videos, the podcasts. By the time I finish this recording, by the time it's edited, uploaded, and all that stuff, it's going to be midnight. So, yeah, I'll be releasing the first one midnight, the second one one o'clock, second one two o'clock, second one three o'clock. So the one without music, the one with music, the one at five hours, and one at ten hours. So... What was that? Midnight, one, two, three. Okay. So. Yeah, it should be alright. Although, I like to have... Uh, I'm very tired. I'm ready to go to bed. I like to have a break. When I finish the recording, I like just to have a break, sit down, maybe watch TV for half an hour, you know, something like that. And then do some editing and then, you know. But when it gets late at night, I know this isn't late, you know. It's like not even half past ten. But for me, at my elderly age, half past ten... Considering that I'm usually awake by six in the morning, yeah, it's fairly late. He wakes me up when he needs to go out, and you know the way I see it, I'm lucky that he does that. You know, he's uh, it definitely saves me clearing up a mess. So he's a very he's a very clean dog. He's a good boy. Although, I'm kind of thinking that there might be some... Well, I'm, I'm going to look behind this settee, the sofa, and see what he's been up to behind there. I don't care what it is he's been up to. I mean, if he's... It's just... If he has been having an accident, then I just need to become a bit more sensitive to what he needs. A bit more aware of what he needs. I'm doing my best. Okay, I'm... I'm putting effort in. 
three percent effort. I'm putting at least three percent of my effort in. So you know that that's, that's something, isn't it? It's not as good as seven percent, but it's still something. It's better than two percent. In it, a a a. So yeah, we'll have a. Oh, blurry. Oh, it's dear. Oh, dear. Oh, I really am yawning. I do apologise if yawning is causing problems for anyone. But I'm just so tired. So tired. Yeah. So Oh, so that's that must be it. I'm just looking at sort of... When it's all spread out quite evenly... So to have sixteen and a half thousand already, it's it's spread out. So it's it's not one particular podcast that's doing. Well, there is the hypnosis for stress and anxiety. That one is right up there at the moment. It's six thousand. Yesterday it had six thousand as well. Uh, a few days ago it had nearly four thousand. But then. Yesterday, I had nearly 5,000 on the hypnosis for sleeping deeply, and 3,000 a day, so yeah, it just, it variates, it really do variate. The other day, I had nearly 5,000 on the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, 3,000 today. And you might think, well, that's that's all right, that's okay. Well, you're making a big deal about it. Well, I'm not making a big deal about it, but on a normal day, a normal month, let's say, okay. Let's say the last 12 months. Oh, no. So, September, 27,000. 26,000 in October. November, 35,000. December, 52,000. So it's grown, you know, sort of gone, gone up. But then August, it was 48,000. 48, so I suppose it, it fluctuates, I guess. Yeah. So you're averaging like probably 10,000 a day. But this month, it's been a lot more. Or, you know, last month and the beginning of this month. But then February last last year, there was 61,500. March last year, it was 64,000. So yeah, it goes up and goes down. It just depends. It's all dependent. You know what I mean? All dependent upon dependency. Just like the stats for this podcast, Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Uh, I know that some people will be listening on other podcasts, but the actual, this the sole podcast, just for this podcast. Can I say the word podcast any more times? It fluctuates. It really does. You know, I've had 15,500 downloads last month. But then November, 18,500. October 23,500. So basically what that tells you is it's going down in popularity. <laughs> but in September it was 14,500. So October it went up quite a bit. Um, last May it was 18,000. And it went up to 25,500. So it, it fluctuates. Fluctuates. Over the last year, there's 223,000 downloads of this podcast. 619 altogether in four years. Nearly five years. Which shows this last year has been a lot better than the year before. Yeah. It's weird. I can't believe I've been doing this for so long. This picture, I, got, I saw a picture of me the other day. Mind you, I was only seven, so that's not really re relative to this. It's not related to this, but it's... I'll tell you the picture I'd like to see. I don't know if I mentioned... 
I visited my parents or my dad and his my stepmom in March last year, I think it was. It might have been April. And basically they had I hadn't seen them for over two years because of the thing that happened in 2020 and 21 and I, so I hadn't seen him for two years spoken to him on the phone and stuff but I hadn't seen him in person and I think the last time I saw him before that was New Year's Eve 2019 yeah, New Year's Eve, 2019. And then 2020, well, I think my dad grew a beard. And then 2021, uh, everything was weird, wasn't it? So for those two years, and then 2022, I saw them at the beginning of, you know, sort of April time last year. And they had these presents. It was where they put together photo albums of... They'd done one for each of us. Each of the kids. Or all, all the kids. Uh, my two older brothers as well. They haven't been around for quite a while. Also my little brother and my stepbrother and stepsister. So we all had photo albums, which was pictures of us as kids and growing up, you know, all the way up to recent years. So there's a picture of me as a tiny kid, I think maybe in a pram. And I did go through the photo album, I think, during one of my podcasts last year. And... No, it was a really nice thought. It was weird, though. Not not the thought, but looking through the photographs was strange because there were certain things that were missing. And I understand why they weren't in there. But considering I grew up from the age of 7 to the age of 16 with a stepmother who was my, as far as I was concerned, was my mum. She wasn't in any photographs. There wasn't one picture of her. Uh, there's also no pictures of my original mother, uh, which again is understandable from my dad's perspective. He probably doesn't even have any. But I'd have thought there'd be some of my stepmum because of all the Christmases we're together, all that stuff. But again, I understand why he wouldn't want to be, you know, want to look at pictures of that uh, those kind of pictures and stuff it was only afterwards I was looking at it and thinking there's something missing here and that was what it was there was there was a lot of pictures that I mean it is only so he, the thing he, he my dad obviously doesn't have all the photographs and also my nan used to have a lot of photographs of us and I think um, I think one of my I think my aunt might have took the photographs not took them but just you know like uh, has them not I don't mean stolen them but you know she she kind of has the photographs because my nan on her where the last place that she lived was a residential, wasn't a residential home, but it was um, sheltered accommodation. So there was, a, there was like a, a lobby area where they did games and played stuff and did yoga and well, I don't know, all kinds of things like that. I think they had a television. But each person had, their own flat, individual flat, but they also had cords and they got checked on every day by the warden. Warden's probably not a proper a good word, isn't it? A good name. Sounds more like a prison, doesn't it? Or a hospital. But the lady was lovely 
who who was there and I think they used to have someone there 24 hours a day and then they cut back and it was only like during the day and I, I might have made that bit up and did uh, yeah so I was just thinking it was quite a horrible story but I won't tell you that the but her flat was really nice she didn't like it because uh, she lived in her own home like three bedroom house big kitchen big living room garden all that stuff so she, she'd moved from there into this uh, very limited place with a living room it wasn't particularly big it was okay but a little kitchen a uh, small bathroom, small bedroom, you know, everything was a lot smaller than what she was used to. So she didn't, she didn't like it. She, you know, because, but, but she didn't, you, you know, she didn't have other, any really other choice because of her mobility. She needed support. And yeah. So she was in the, the best place, but it's it's hard, isn't it? Because it's easy for someone else to say that, but you know, s someone could say to me, "Well, you you need to live, you need to live here now. That's where you're going to live, because it's better for you." Uh, you know, let's say my back didn't heal up properly. Well, you got to be on the ground floor now, but I want to live on the ground floor. I like being up away from. Uh, I hear too much traffic when I'm on the ground floor. And I hear the front door being slammed every time and it shakes my my room, shakes my, my flat. But upstairs I don't hear it so much. Nope, that's where you got to, that's where you got to be there now. You know, it's got no choice. It's good for you. So it's, yeah, I need to shut up really. It's, I really, you know, my nan didn't want to be there. But it was... It's, that's where she was anyway. So I would have quite liked to live there myself. It was quite cool. It was a nice... It was a nice... It wouldn't have suited me, really. I mean... I do like being around old people. I probably would have ended up being like a carer. Like an unpaid carer. Just looking out for everyone. Because I like to kind of, I like to be in everyone's business. No, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? No, but I, it's a bit too small because I've got a, yeah, this room, my living room is probably the size of her living room and her kitchen. I put all together. I mean, yeah, width wise, probably. No, lengthwise, widthwise, it's probably not a lot of difference, but it's hard. I can I can visualize it, but it's a long time, long time ago since I was there. Two thousand and fourteen December was the last time that I visited that place where she lived. So that's what, eight years, eight years. Wow. Eight years? It is, isn't it? Eight years. That's ridiculous. Anyway. I... What am I mentioning this for? Where was I going with this? There was a reason. There was a reason why I was mentioning her flat. How did I get to this point in the conversation? So I was talking about... So I imagine there's some people listening thinking, we don't care, just please don't go back to talking about stats again. We don't want to hear about statistics. Well, I went from statistics to talking about my nan. But I wasn't talking about my nan. I was... talking about him down there 
I wonder what it was. Does anybody know? Anybody? Anybody? Anyone for anyone? Is there anybody there? I don't know. Oh, yeah. My budgie. I had this budgie. And... <laughs> no. I had... Oh, photograph albums. That's it. How did I get from, from budgie to photograph albums? I don't know. But my brain quickly switched back to the photograph albums once I visualised the budgie. Strange. I don't know what that is. Maybe because I was thinking of the budgie being in the old house that we used to live and then that reminded me in very fast action in my brain. The house, the people. Oh, photo album. Because that was kind of what I was focusing on is the people that were missing. Uh, two, really. My, my stepmom or my uh, first... Not step mum. <laughs> Whatever you call it. Uh, and her mum, who is my nan. So both of those not in any pictures. And yeah, it was just a bit weird. But I was just thinking, what pictures would I actually like to see? What would I like to see from my childhood? What photographs would I really like to see? that I don't have any of. Maybe there, there are none. I think... I'd like to see a picture of my mother, my biological mother. Maybe a picture of her holding me. Because she had me for, I think, six months. So... And then she gave birth. No, I, was, I think I was premature. Not the first time. I've kept that going. And I'd, this, I'd like to see a picture of my biological, my mother's side grandparents. Because I don't know what they look like. Uh, I'm, I don't, I know that my granddad isn't around. He was gone before I was even born. But whether or not, I mean, realistically, I'm... Guessing that if her mother, my grandmother, my my other grandmother, was still around, she'd be in her late nineties, if not early hundreds. So the chances are she's not around anymore either, because there wasn't a there wasn't a big difference in age between my dad and my mum. Uh, there was like a couple, maybe a year or two difference in their ages I think they were both teenagers when they got together late teenagers and uh, yeah I think he was like 18 and she was 17 or something like that and so back in those days it was normal it was just the standard thing to have kids quite early you know, in during the the like post war period, the baby bloom period, which my dad was part of. Baby baby bloomer? Is that what they call it? The baby bloomers? <laughs> Something like that. The baby boosters. So that'd be interesting. Uh I'd I'd like I don't yeah, I'd like to see pictures of if I've got any family that I don't know about so for example cousins although I don't really have any contact with generally my cousins anymore um, it's just the way it is but I, I did I've had very little c contact with my cousins generally like my first cousins apart from when I was a kid uh, but then as I got older, I, st I did sort of um, start to get on really well with one of my cousins, who I've known since I was, you know, seven or whatever. And she's brilliant, but I haven't seen her for eight years, nearly. Uh, she was 
yeah. Uh, I hopefully I, I will see her and also get on really well with her mum, my auntie. She's she's brilliant. So it's it's just the way it is, isn't it? It's like you just they live in a different part of the country, so I don't see them. But I might have brothers and sisters that I don't know about. You know, my biological mother might have gone and had had kids. She was still quite young. I don't know, she might have had more kids. So I might have... I mean, I could have a brother and sisters that are in their, like, 40s. <laughs> They're weird, isn't it? It's like, wow, I could have, like, middle-aged brothers and sisters. So that would be interesting. I might, I mean, I, I'm not saying this like uh, cavalier or or just off the cuff. Uh, but I might have a child out there. I might have a, have a son or a daughter out there in the world somewhere. There's, a, there's at least one very good chance, actually. But I never saw the person again, so I don't know. So there's, that's the possibility. So I'd like to not necessarily see a picture. Of, I'd like to meet, if I've got a child, I'd like to meet them. But again, that, that person would be, well, 25 now? Well, let me work it out. If I... Six, 2006, 2016. 70, 80, 19, 20, 21, 22. So yeah, 20, 26 years old. That that child would be. Makes me feel really old. But yeah, I still don't. I don't know, and I've got no clue. I did think I might have been a father before. This is uh, ex girlfriend of mine. And. We were together in 1991. This is a different person from what I'm talking about. But 1991, we were together, like, in a relationship. And then we split up. And then we got together briefly in 1993. And she said she thought she might be pregnant. And then I never heard from her again. And those were the days with 40 internet. I tried to get in contact with her. I put about 4% effort in. And... I think I phoned where she worked. She worked in hospital. I phoned there constantly for... about two minutes. And then, yeah, I just gave up. But... The thing is, she knew where I was. I was still in the same address that I was before. Still had the same telephone number as before. You know, so I hadn't gone anywhere. She she knew where I was. And... For the next year, I was still living in that address. And then I did move out, but... You know, there was... I just didn't hear anything from her. Because she used to phone me. You know, that's how we kept in contact. There was no other way of being in contact. Other than, like, letters and stuff like that. Because she'd moved away to... I've got no idea where it was, but it was out of London. Quite a long way away from London. So I don't know how we kept in contact. Must have been letters and phone calls. Uh, didn't have any mobile phones then. There was no internet, no email... No text messaging, no Facebook, none of that stuff. It was all landlines or letters, like on pieces of paper. It's very, very retro. But yeah, I remember her saying to me, oh, I think I might be pregnant. And okay. And then I didn't hear from her again. I didn't, didn't hear anything. And, uh, okay, there's actually an ending to this story. She contacted me on Facebook, probably about five years ago, six years ago. And I said, she said, is that, 
She said, is that whoever? I said, yeah, it's me. I said, she said, how are you doing? I said, I'm all right. And I asked her. But I just, just blurted it out. I didn't, I didn't speak to her person to person. But I just, you know, we did a messaging. And I just said to her, look, just tell me, did, were you, you know, because she said she had three kids. And I said, how old are they? And then she told me in, if you listen back to the podcast where I actually tell this story, it's a bit more blatant than the way I'm t- telling it now. I don't think he's actually drinking. I think he's, he's, can you hear him? I think he's just flicking his tongue in and out of the water, just for effect. <laughs> he just shook his, shook himself, and then he shook his bum as well, like a separate. It's funny. I'm falling in love with a little monkey. It's, it's terrible. He's so aggressive sometimes. There's certain things he doesn't like. He doesn't like being laid on his back unless he's already laying on his back. So if I hold him and I hold him backwards, he doesn't like it. Now, really, I get, I just kind of realized earlier that I should just not do that to him. But I'm not doing it in a horrible way, I'm doing it in a cuddly way. He's come and he just sat down next to me, just in front of my foot, just next, basically sat on my foot nearly. He's just sitting there. He knows he's, he's going to be going for a walk in a minute. We have to go for a walk before the street lights go out, won't we? Yeah? Yeah, okay. We'll go in a second. When I finish this, give me five minutes and then we'll go for a walk. Okay? Okay? You are a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. I also know when um, he wants to go out, generally, or it's one of two things. If he sits there and lets me stroke him, I don't mean like in a strokey way, but if he's, well, I do mean in a strokey way, but if he kind of wants my attention, he lets me touch him, lets me stroke him or pat him, that means he wants something, either a treat or he wants to go for a walk. If he wants to play, what he'll do is he'll pull back and he'll run away from me and he'll come forward again, like teasing me, teasing me with the hope of affection. Okay, I'm going to go then. He wants my attention, so... Okay, shh, shh. Take care of yourselves, and I shall speak to you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye.